And I would cry at the end of every night. How do I be of service to animals on a global scale? That was my mantra. And I didn't really know what I was asking for. I kind of just thought I was going to be a really great dog trainer. That was what I wanted to do. And my ego self, my personality self, wouldn't really allow it because I thought, you know, dog trainer. You know, I can't be a dog trainer. I'm in a six-figure job as an you know, executive VP, you know? But the point was, really, I knew that that was my calling, and so I was trying to find what I could do. And the other mantra kind of that I had running in my mind was I, I didn't really like corporate society. I felt like it was a, a, a trapped enslavement for me personally. So I kept asking, how can I make God my boss? How can I make God my boss? And then I had another on my own spiritual journey. I had a kind of personal mantra that was, that went something like this. It went, um, I want the truth no matter what. I want the truth no matter what, and I don't care what it takes. So after, like, my whole career of asking for this, finally, what happened was my brother died unexpectedly, and I started hearing him in my head. It was an, an accidental drug overdose, and I now realize that it was his divine contract to wake me up. So when I started saying this to my husband at the time, I'm, I think I'm hearing my dead brother in my ear. My ex-husband was like, whoa, I didn't sign up for this. I, psychic, sorry, dead people alive, no. And he checked out, which uh, really propelled me forward, so I took off and went to Maui. And I lived in Maui for two years, pretty much by myself. I didn't really have very much contact at all with normal, everyday civilization that we would uh, associate with in, in Los Angeles. And that took me through a radical shift in consciousness. And I was playing with these really ultimate realities, which you learn about in places like this at the Conscious Life Expo, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes. So, with that, that's pretty much how I started getting into animal communication and started working with these things that I do, like psychic communication. I also work in a lot of alternative healing practices, like theta healing, if you know what that is. We know. Yes, yes. And Reiki. I'm sure most of you know what Reiki is. And all kinds of energy healing. I'm a, an Akashic Records practitioner. So I read the Akashic Records for pets and for people. And I also teach people how to empower themselves to tap into these gifts, because they are all our gifts. We all have them. We all can use them. We just have sort of been separated from them for a really long time. And now, if you know about 2012, I'm sure if you don't, you know, you're hearing about it this weekend, it's really just about the rebirth of us, the reckoning of, of, of who we truly are, which is what's, what's the truth of who we all are? Anyone want to venture a guess? God. Yeah! There's God running through us. The, the energy of every single thing and the beauty of what's going on right now is with quantum physics, we can explain it all scientifically. So even the scientist's mind can't really disagree with it. It's like, okay, well, you can define it as the world of vibrational energy that's running in and through everyone, or you can call it the bliss state of God that is just knowing, the knowingness that we're all one. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Right? You say potato, I say potato. But the point here is that once we start learning how to tap into this vibration and this energy, which is a universal, all-knowing, loving force... We can heal ourselves, we can talk to animals, we can talk to one another, telepathy. We can do all kinds of energy work, clearing out energy blocks. Amazing things are possible for us. And this is what lies ahead of 2012. It's nothing to be scared of. It's something to embrace. So, with that, how many of you are pet parents? I assume you probably all are. Awesome! So you guys are all going to find out about how you can go home tonight to talk to your own animal companions. How many of you are already talking to your animal companions? Yeah. How many of you are listening to your animal companions? Okay, good. How many of you are actually receiving messages from your animal companions? Awesome. That's so fantastic. So everybody is already really learning about it and practicing it. So my intention is before the end of the time, and you will see me looking at my clock, but that's only so that I can keep track of my time because I talk a lot. Once you get me started, I might never stop. Um, I want to do some readings for Pete, little mini readings if you have questions, but we'll do that towards the end, okay? Mm -hmm. So first, I just, for those of you, is anyone who is classically trained in animal communication and classically using it as a professional in some capacity or in their career work or, yeah, okay. So... What I want to do is give you a little overview of really how it works and why we know it works. And then we'll talk about how you can start using it. And then we'll do some of the little mini 
little on spot on meetings right in here where you can just ask me a question and we'll see how that goes, okay? So, and here's the one thing too. I love, love, love questions. So if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask because this is the thing we know. We have universal brainwave, we're all connected, so if it's in your mind, it's in someone else's, okay? All right, cool, and it makes it more fun. So, okay. So first of all, who knows how it works? Does anybody in the room know how it works? Do you wanna? Um, it's mostly about pictures and um, the intent behind the pictures. Yes, awesome, that is, that is a huge way of how it works. Anyone else? There's other ways? Okay. So pictures is one way. So the way we would explain it scientifically, and I really like to explain this scientifically because we humans, we doubt. We've been trained, classically trained, to doubt things. To